Hi guys. So today, what we'll be doing is we're going over a review of Stripes, which was just released this weekend. So it is a very interesting book. It's actually on the back of Red Thunder. Um, this is the first American book, and you'll realize that after this book comes out, in the next book of Team Yankee Rules for, 27, for 2018, it will not be inside the rulebook anymore. So Americans and Soviets are going to both be removed from that. Uh, all the lists will be out, since now the Soviets have their own book and the Americans have their own book. So anyway, this is the American one. Let's take a look. So in this book, you'll realize that um, the Americans get a very, very serious revamp. They get new tanks, they get new formations, they get a lot more flexibility. And so we'll go through each of those things in this review. So the first thing is um, that you realize the moment you open the book, on the very first page, is they've already kind of moved the timeline. They kind of show a little bit of what happens after, um, after the actual forces go over. They show you the front line as of 12th of August, and they have a little coloring over there on the map. Uh, they got some interesting fluff. It differs slightly from uh, what you find in the other books. It also goes over some of the more the Seventh Corps, uh, some of the other U.S. forces in Europe at the time. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. You've also got the First Armament, and of course, everyone's favorite, the Marines are in this book. So a lot of the rumors that have been going around, a lot of the IP uh, up armored uh, Abrams and stuff like that, they're all in this book. So it's, a, it's really packed with information. I mean, if we look at Red Thunder and what it did for the Soviets, it really just gave us uh, what support was given to the East Germans. They just gave that to us. And then they gave us a new tank and a little bit of support. That's about it. And they gave us copper hits, which weren't the equivalent to the American copper hits. But whatever. So, uh, we'll go through the very first page after you get through all the fluff you will get to the formation page, which is the same, same format as what you saw previously with the other books and in the main rule book. But you realize that now you've got nine different formations to choose from for the Americans, and they're not exclusive in any way. So you can mix and match as and how you like. Uh, apart from that, there's one whole page, which is just the nine formations, and then there's another page, which is all your support, and it gives you all this. Now, the main takeaway from this entire page is you realize that on one end it says you may bring a allied formation. And that's one of the few things that we've all been waiting for. We've all wanted to see the ability to bring allied formations from any other country on your side. Now of course for the Soviets it's not so great because you only have the East Germans right now. But when the Czechs come out or when the Polish come out or you know whatever other forces that are going to come out you can actually bring them on, which I think is going to be quite interesting. Now, of course, the Soviet side may not be as interesting because they were using mostly the same tanks. We still have a little bit more to go, um, but generally it's all there. But for the Americans, the Germans, they all differed quite, quite, quite significantly, quite distinctive. Um, you're going to realize a lot of things here are different, but we'll go through them one at a time. So the first thing is, um, there aren't rules for them in the main rule book. But over here, it clearly states that NATO allied support do not count towards how many formations you have left when determining if you've lost a game. I'm taking this to mean formation morale. So, if you bring, on the bright side, you could bring Leopard 2s with your, your, your uh, American infantry or your American Marines because they are the best in class tank. They are expensive, but you make up for that because you have cheap infantry here. So, it's a, it's a give or take. Um, but you get most of it. Um, and that means that your tanks are now going to be able to fire and kill almost any Soviet thing that they put forward. Not bad. Um, you go up to the Abrams, which have the up-armored um, variant available, and they allow you to pay a little bit of points, and you get an upgrade in armor. Um, you get some to the front, you get some to the side. It's all pretty good. Um, gun, they haven't done the one, the 125s, so we're still at the 105 guns, um, unfortunately, but that's just one formation. The other formation you can bring are the M60s, which I think everyone's been waiting for. And the M60s are a very good fighting force. They come in at 
just above a T72M and just below a proper T72. So if you know your points, you know what I'm talking about. Um, then after that, you realize that they have about the same armor as a T72M. They've got, um, you know, they, they come in with the same gun, unfortunately, as the Abram, but they come with stabilizers and thermal imaging. Now, you can't move as far as you can with the Abram, but with the amount of shots that you can lay down field, I think it certainly is worth a shot. Um, and then you have your mech platoons, which have largely stayed the same. Um, they standard stock stuff that you've always had. You always can bring your ITVs. They do have an alternative for them in the book. We'll go through that in a bit. Uh, you can also bring an armor, armored cavalry troop, which is quite interesting. It allows you to bring the Hueys and, and a whole bunch of other stuff, um, but it allows you to bring a armored cavalry troop HQ, which is actually just an M113 scout. It's a, it's a more a recce platoon than anything else. And you also can bring your M113 scout sections. You can bring all that kind of thing. Um, and then on to the next one, you have the actual light reconnaissance that everyone's been waiting for, the Humvees. Cute little models, amazingly nice casted models, almost a simple two-piece put together and that's it. Now, all, M11, uh, all Humvees come in three variants. Um, you can take them as the tow variant, you can take them as the grenade launcher, the automatic grenade launcher variant, or you can take them as the 50 cal variant. So you've got the anti-tank, you've got the anti-infantry, and you've got the anti uh, the, the, the blasts, right? Um, of course, it follows the same um, idea of the um, the automatic grenade launchers that the Afghans to use. So the firepower, expectedly, is not going to be low. It's going to be very high. It's going to be very hard for you to take out infantry that are dug in, in cover, or in bulletproof. Uh, but if they're in the open, you get so many more shots on the move than most other things. Like, normally at halves, these guys don't. Um, and then, of course, the other great thing that everyone's looking forward to is the 82nd Airborne. I think everyone's hearing Fortunate Son... Um, Kind of remixes right now uh or right of the valkyrie depending um either way the hueys are here uh in plastic which is fantastic uh they also come with very large platoon stands uh and of course your iconic door guns now door guns are pretty good uh but you can only shoot them the turn that you land so that's kind of a an interesting thing because that's what they were meant to do they were meant to land and then the m60 gunner clears the lz for you and then the troops run off or you land you provide suppressing fire and everyone mounts on either way um what i do find interesting is that the americans um hueys uh can put on three stands of infantry uh it comes with a normal aircraft save it doesn't have the armor of a hind or a warthog things like that um, but yeah so that that's pretty much it uh, and then we can go on to the next list and the next one's pretty interesting the next unit that we want to bring up is the Sheridans the Sheridans um, in any platoon or any formation whatever it is you can only ever bring five of them that's it you can't bring more than that now they do come with a very very interesting and very very powerful array of weapons they have uh, the Shililag missile, which allows them to hit things in long range. And then for things in short range, they have the 152 gun, right? So they do have very, very good uh, balance of offensive um, and defensive abil uh, capabilities. But let's not forget the Sheridan was largely an armor, an armored tank. There was almost paper thin armor on these guys. So that will be reflected in the stats. And then um, they finally fixed the, the problem with the American AA. Uh, previously, all you could do was uh, bring your VADs and pray, and maybe you know try and spam the table with infantry companies just so you have enough 50 cows to go around. Uh, they've changed that now. So apart from the fact that you can bring an airline formation, you also have more options now. The first thing they did was they brought the chopper in, which everyone who knows anything about the history of the period, it was the guided missile AA. 
Um, it is unarmored, so unfortunately you are going to have that problem, uh, but it certainly is an improvement from what you can bring now, which is just the VATs. In addition to the VADs, you also can bring the York, um, which was actually an experimental weapon, never really saw mass production, but I guess just to spice things up, they had to bring it on because if they didn't, uh, VATs just weren't cutting it. Uh, at 32 inches, as your only AA, uh, it was terrible. Uh, and uh, if and when I do a tactics on Soviets, you'll realize why the VADs are so terrible at what they do. Uh, 32 inches is just not going to cover it. Um, everybody else, like these Germans and all, they're going to bring stingers and um, man pads. Uh, these, this book will allow the Americans to do the same, but instead of them having stingers on just infantry troops, they were actually trained to be in Humvees and then fire them out so they can relocate very quickly to where they're needed, which is interesting. Um, so yeah, there's no option for you to take them as infantry. You have to take them in the Humvees. But seeing how small that base is uh, for the Humvees compared to you know, all the other things on the table, you can hide behind some pretty good terrain fairly easily and probably dodge it. Um, and let's not forget, the Humvees are zero, zero, zero. So they're not unarmored, they can't be pinned. So you have a fairly good chance of doing what you want, what you want done. Uh, you can't be pinned so that you can't fire AA the way that the geckos or the chaprols could. Right? Um, then after that, you've got your air support options. And another interesting thing they did in this book uh, was they brought in, like I said previously, the Marines. So the Marines tank company will be M60s. They didn't have Abrams there. They used all the M60s. So slightly lighter tanks. Um, the scales and everything are pretty much the same. And I mentioned the points uh, where, the, where they stand in comparison to other tanks. Um, you also have your scout sections and whatnot. And then let's get to the best part, the Marine Infantry. So this is the pride and joy of the American Army. And not well, Navy, actually. By the way, uh, the Marines come with a skill, stock skill, um, same as everybody else. But you are able to bring very, very large platoons. So for slightly under what a medium platoon of Soviet infantry would cost, Strekel V, you can bring nine stands of the Marine rifles, and they come with the AAVPs, which are the amphibious uh, landing landing things, the ones over here, these guys. Um, and they come with a very large seating capacity. They can bring seven, seven stands in a single little AAVP. Um, it comes with, of course, your very stock uh, grenade launcher and 50 cal, um, which is an AMG, let's not forget, so that is very good. Um, and you can have up to nine stands, you can also bring your motars, and they've also given you the option for s'mores, or Gust Carl Gustavs. So those are the same thing, they do exactly what the British ones do, they've got the same stat line, everything, and they cost the same. And all the, all the while, let's not forget, Americans are vets, so they're always going to get hit on a 4+, plus. that's standard across all NATO, so that hasn't changed at all. Um, but what I really like about the Marine Divisions is that you can bring, um, you can swap out the AAVPs for Hueys, no problem. No point cost, it's the same thing, one for one. And you can, uh, you can swap all the AAVPs for four Hueys, so as long as your platoon, your stand count is... 12 or below, you should be able to just stiff stuff all of them inside there. So that's pretty interesting. Um, you've got some pretty good stuff uh, with the LAVs. I don't know if anyone else like the LAVs. I love Budums because of their design. I like BTRs. And I gotta say the LAV is very, very similar. I like the LAV because it's another eight wheel vehicle. And it's the only thing I, I, I thought was that I thought they could bring in. Um, uh, the infantry in them, but apparently you can't, so it's like all stock full. Um, but you can bring the LAV companies, they come with uh, the stock cannon, is of course a 25mm, but it is anti helicopter, so that does give you a little bit of an edge when it comes to handling um, other battlefield uh, things on. You do have an anti tank, which comes with the same Tau uh, ITV standard um, mount which gives you the hammerhead ability. 
So same as the ITV. It also allows you to do scout, which is very, very good because that means that while ITVs can't move or change position easily without just being concealed, the LAV anti-tank sections can actually move and still be gone to ground, so it's still sixes or sevens to hit depending on range and technology the firing at you. So it's pretty good. And of course, uh, the LAVs have the motor sections, which is fine, but you can only bring them in twos. So that means that they're not going to be a very effective artillery weapon, they're going to be more whatever. And last but not least, the last thing I want to go over today is this. American air support has changed. They have now given the Americans the AV-8. So these are Harriers, they're an attack flight, they're the same thing as what you get with the British, everyone loves that, but, but, they don't use the same cluster bomb. They are using the CBU-100 cluster bombs. And that means the firepower is significantly worse than what it was, and the AT value is also lower. Now, it doesn't really save a lot of things. A lot of things are still going to die to you. They still can't save themselves. But, let's not forget, the Harrier is a jump jet. So, it actually is going to still come in on threes instead of fours. And, because it's less firepower than what the British get, they are cheaper. So bear that in mind. Right? So all in all, and then after that, you know, for the book they give you some scenarios to find out um, what you know you can play some of the companies here, you can see what it is. Uh, they've redone some of the um, the 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 how to paint sections and whatnot. Uh, at the back of all the book, now they have got a full uh, product section which shows you all the different boxes and what's inside each box so that you can go out and buy stuff, of course. Uh, the sad thing is that the AVP still comes in a resin kit, but I can understand that because it's not a main tank. Um, the Abrams box is technically the same, um, but they do come with uh, more unit cards now for the IP, the upper armored versions. So I think with the M60s and the M1 Abrams, you're going to see a very different meta forming. Um, but whatever it is, I think the game is going to be a lot more interesting because the Soviets were dominating for a little while there. Um, some people um, have looked at it and they kind of said, you know, it looks a little bit uh, like every new codex is coming out with more stuff. What I would say is give Battlefront a little bit of time. They are actually doing the lists as much justice as they can, one at a time. And because the game is so popular, I think you know uh, they need a little bit of time to catch up and make everything balanced out. And I trust they will. Right now, it may seem like you know every new codex is going getting getting better and better. But really, if you look at the Red Thunder, Soviets didn't get that much of a boost. Um, this may be the largest boost, but that was because the Americans were on the flat foot, um, considering they didn't get a boost since the very start. So let them all come up with the baseline, and then we can work our way forward from there. Um, a lot of people says now Americans are going to be totally gay, they're going to be totally powerful, and all that, but um, I don't think so. So I think, uh, you know, let's just, let's just kind of look at the next tournament and see how it goes. I don't think the Americans are going to just clean sweep it. I think it's still quite a fair game. There's still a lot of inbuilt balance in there, um, which I think we can rely on. Yeah. So anyway, um, this street date is 1st December, uh, which was last week. And then you can now pick up your copy on our website in the link below. Please do subscribe. We'll be doing more tactics, reviews, and more battle reports on stripes and all the formations inside as well as all the soviet stuff we do tactics videos uh, we do battle videos and if you want to order anything just remember we do free shipping all across the globe as long as you buy a hundred dollars worth and our prices are very competitive thanks guys i'll see you next time